Hello viewer, welcome to the Crossing Borders uh, online uh, Sustainable Development Goals uh, port portfolio platform. Uh, my name is Andrew Julius Bender, International Program Coordinator at Crossing Borders. And I sit with uh, most of the projects that are around the Sustainable Development Goals. And I'm sure you're looking at David this video because you have probably been on our site on Canopy Lab or on our website and seen that we work with development goals, the sustainable development goal. And, and you're not the only one. Uh, many people keep asking us the same question. How do you work with the sustainable development goals? Why do you work with the sustainable development goals? And how is it going with, with, with the sustainable development goals? Now, for a quick, quick introduction, uh, we have right now implemented around five diff diff projects, uh, partnership projects around the, the sustainable development goals. Our first project around the SDGs, uh, as we would shorten it, was with uh, our partner in Uganda, uh, uh, Open Space Center where we, con we, we carried out a one-year project around taking the sustainable development goals into high schools and using them as a, an agenda for debate and, 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 and public dialogue for the youngsters in the schools. Our second project, again, very, very close to the, one, uh, to the content of the one in Uganda, was in Denmark. Uh, where we have taken the sustainable development goals in uh, different high schools in, uh, in Denmark uh, for the youngsters in Denmark where really they spend most of their time uh, to talk, to touch, to articulate what the sustainable development goals are and, and how they can be part of this agenda. Uh, we have uh, implemented a similar project in Sierra Leone uh, with our partner iPad uh, where we have again combined two components. We have, we have combined the high schools uh, as, as well as uh, the local communities around these high schools to articulate, work with the sustainable development goals uh, with the aim of getting them engaged and knowing what the sustainable goals are. And uh, then we started a new partnership a, a renewed partnership with our partner in Uganda, Open Space Center, where on top of the high schools, and after realizing, we went on to start working with youth organizations that were working with the sustainable development goals, and at the same time mobilizing others that were not necessarily working with the sustainable development goals to be engaged with the sustainable development goals. Uh, then we have uh, a, a big project with uh, open with 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 the Ghana Community uh, Radio Network in Ghana, where we are through 23 different uh, sustainable uh, uh, community radios, air working with articulating the sustainable development goals into local contexts, bringing them to the lowest grassroots as possible where these community radios are found so that the local communities are part of talking about and knowing what the sustainable development goals are. And in another objective, trying to utilize the sustainable development goals as a, pol as, as, as a way a, a politicians should deliver services, answer to their communities, answer to their people, their followers. Um, so, What's the story behind all these projects? Uh, where am I going with this? Um, my job is basically to tell you about how Crossing Borders uh, works with the sustainable goals, the strategy, the, the central core of why we do all these projects and how. Our strategy in working with the development uh, goals, uh, the sustainable development goals, is basically made in a word that we call localizing the sustainable development goals. Localizing can mean a lot of things. In our context, we have three key things that define localizing. One, that we want the sustainable development goals to come to as many people as possible, for as many people as possible to know them, and for as many people as possible to utilize that knowledge to be able to track them. There is a hidden component in as many people as possible knowing 
I don't know if you know the idea of the critical mass. If you get the critical mass of people that have the knowledge about something and can build agency around it, then the chances of succeeding at that is higher. And that we see it in development work, uh, that every time you're able to tincture a critical mass around something, however resor unresourced communities are, they get, they create models out of this that facilitate their further working with a component like that. So by getting as many people as possible to know, to be knowledgeable about the sustainable development goals, we are believing that we are taking them from this high level, UN level, national level, a big meeting, big people agenda, to people having them in their hands, articulating them, understanding them. I'll give you an example from Ghana. When we were at one of the community radios, we were discussing, and I asked the presenter, tell me what what would be the relevance of a big agenda like this to, 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 to local everyday people? Uh, the answer was, wasn't surprising. This is what we are also hoping for, that people can articulate this way. He answered, well, Andrew, no one wants to wake up hungry. No one wants to wake up poor. No one wants to wake up with bad health. And I mean, we know the environment is crumbling and people who are farmers, who are fish people, are struggling with catching up with the effects of the crumbling environment. Uh, so, so no one wants to see these effects. So if you get as many people to understand the, 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 the back, back, back end, I would say, uh, the, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the core of these SDGs and be able to utilize them as daily knowledge that they can talk, articulate, and, 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 and hold their leaders accountable around, then you have a high chance of delivering on them. The other component about localizing the SDGs is that they need to be systematized alongside or according to the government, the country's planning systems. Because in many, many contexts, you have the SDGs as, as kind of a, 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 a thing that everyone is talking about. But when, you, when, when, when you're talking about it like that, then it's out there. But our localizing model says, Look, if you want it to succeed, like we've done with other things like human rights, like gender equality, like democracy, uh, like um, name it, whatever has come through development processes, we have tried to put it as a, as, as, as a framework of the local planning systems. And that, by systematizing it that way, then you have the chance of putting it on the agenda of the planning mechanisms of every community, every country, so that the chances of us looking at how we gonna get everyone in school, how we gonna reach this, uh, this, this, how we gonna attain uh, uh, universal healthcare, how we gonna attain e equality of genders, how we gonna attain, then it has a high chance because then it comes as part of budgets, then it comes as part of the discourses in the planning meetings, then it comes as part of drawing um, frameworks for following up, monitoring and reporting. And then the third thing for us is that you need to be, to put these ones to the context, you need to contextualize them because many of the targets and indicators within these sustainable development goals they are not context aware. They are not fit for context. In our idea of localizing, we actually say we want to contextualize them, but we also want them to come to the grassroots. And I will explain this later, why the grassroots is so important to be part of the localizing of the SDGs. Now, you will ask me, well, you're explaining these big words about localizing and etc. I want to give you a quick explanation if you turn to me, uh, with me on this side. I've already hinted that the sustainable development goal is such a huge agenda. It's a huge agenda. I remember in 2015 when we, when we, we started working with the sustainable development goals about 20, 
uh, about September, everyone was doubting. Everyone was saying, it's too big an agenda. No one wants, okay, you have the 17 goals, yes? But you have 169 targets. And then you have 232 indicators. No one has the capacity to do that. No one, everyone was, 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 was afraid. It was too big. It was too big. Many actors were. Uh, but the thing is, our everyday lives is also complicated. It's not just, a, we don't put indicators on it. But if we put indicators, there would be more. So if you're going to succeed with such a big agenda and move from it will not work to let's work, then you need to be very systematic you need to put it as many people to help you do it and you need to put it to the context so it fits the context you need to localize it and of course you can come up with more things that work in your context but the second thing that we have seen while we are working with the sustainable development goals is that when the sustainable development goals started when they come into a country, imagine this circle is a country. All the countries that signed up to the agenda would say, well, then we go ahead with implementing the sustainable goals. One of the first things that these countries did was creating a task force for the sustainable development goals. And that was beautiful. It was marvelous. The task forces were given budgets, they were given, uh, they go ahead to put into planning systems on how the sustainable development goals would work. But many of them did not go beyond being task forces and working the sustainable development goals. Now, what then happens is that the sustainable development goals becomes a boundary project, a project where you have the main government planning machine are on the other side, you have a task force that works the sustainable goals, and then this task force is a, called a, a kind of a communication, a channel or a link between the country planning systems and the sustainable goals and all the UN who is com co co compiling uh, on, on, on the progress of the sustainable goals. And it's easy this way because you keep on reporting and you keep on collecting statistics. The thing is, if it remains, if it stays as a, a, a project within an economy, then it, it will easily end up as a foreign project. It will, it will kind of be, oh, we need to report on the SDGs. Okay, let's create a format. Let's go pick up the indicators and we report. But what we want by trying to localize the SDGs is that they become part of the planning system of the country, of an economy, of the community. And, and, and this is important because if they become part of an organic and domesticated as part of the planning system of the country, then the chances are higher that we will try as much as possible to set into systems and planning mechanisms, uh, monitoring, following up mechanisms, financing and budgets to be able to try to come closer to reaching the sustainable development goals. And I'm enthusiastic about the sustainable development. Maybe we reach them by 2030. Maybe we don't reach them. But I think, I think that we will have a bigger shot if we systematically implement them. Now, I will give you a quick example from, from, from one of the countries we work with. Uh, this is uh, my country. I come myself from Uganda. In Uganda, uh, if you followed the model of the national planning system, in Uganda you have a planning system that's based on, 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 on districts, counties, constituencies, sub-counties, parishes, villages. Now, it's also, in my mind, one of the most developed, developed countries because you have planning at different levels. You start with planning at the villages where suggestions are sent upwards to the next government levels. The next government level is the sub-counties. The parishes are administrative. These are policy government levels. Then you move those through your members of parliament at constituencies, 
uh, and some representatives, again, very administrative at counties, but this end up into local government as well as at parliament level to decide to make policy. Now, when policy is made at national level, then that goes again, trickles down to the districts, directives come to the districts, directives come to counties, constituencies, down from districts to sub-counties, from sub-counties to parishes, and then to villages. Now, if, if, if you, if you, 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 you don't put an agenda like the Sustainable Development Goals, and you create ample, frameworks within the national planning system of Uganda for you to follow up, plan for, fund, as well as gather up on the indicators based on the country's planning systems, then you're doing yourself a disadvantage. Then you're gonna collect on the SDGs at national level based on one task force that goes around and asks different ministries to report but you will not have the chance to influence how the SDGs are working at districts or how the SDGs are working at sub-counties which is one of the most important places where policies are being made on how you make local roads on how you work with the sub-county based uh, hospitals and this is where poor people that can't reach the National Referral Hospital, end up on a daily basis. This is where women that are delivering from their homes are rushed. This is where children that are collapsing in school are rushed. And if they don't come there, then the chances of those sustainable goals going lower into these planning systems and budgets onto the village and parish levels is also diminished. So it's really, really, really important, going back to the idea of localizing, that you need to try to, one, put, implement, get the sustainable development goals into national planning systems. And, and, and I know it's a big struggle because there is no finances. All the reports from 2019, 2020, they are saying there is no financing. But... What should we do? Should we drop it? Should we try to, 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 to put it on our planning agendas? And then two, let it be articulated into the local context. Because the local context will give us more accurate ways of finding solutions to the things that are stopping us from reaching the sustainable development goals. We, we really cannot say, well, everyone must go to school. But in a village like I come from, there is only one school that serves about 10 kilometers on each side. Now, if I say everyone should go to school, then I'm also putting up a new dimension of, 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 of hindrances. Then I'm saying that children have to move 10 kilometers. But if I'm context aware and I know there is one school, then the planning should be able to put it in consideration more schools so people can reach them easily. It's, it's, it's also important, and, and, and by doing those two steps, you should be able to engage as many people as possible in understanding what the sustainable development goals are and why they need to be met and their roles in these. And this contributes to two important things. One, participation, popular participation. Some people like to call it democratic participation. And that is relevant because if people can participate with good knowledge, then you have built their agency in demanding for accountability, in working to fulfill their roles, in supporting their leaders, but also understanding what is happening around their local community. Now, if we can if we can get to the level where a critical mass of people know about the sustainable development goals, what we need to achieve, what we need to do in order to achieve them, 
then we would almost have walked part of the journey towards 2030. We still have some years to go. And as COVID-19 has shown us, if there is a will to stop things, if there is a will to fight things, to fight poverty, to fight inequality, to fight uh, school dropouts, then we can reach things. We can do, we can do, we can put into this into system, we can put into motion policies that can get us there. And as Devos uh, 2020 manifesto says, the company, the company's role needs to change. We know this is where the biggest funding comes from. And I hope Devos 2020 can be held on their words and come into the funding of the sustainable event goal. Now Enjoy your course. If you have more questions, write to us. Uh, if you want to join our projects, please write to us and join our projects. Uh, we will be looking forward to hearing from you, your feedback, and to host you whenever you want to join our projects. Thank you.